Welcome everyone to another Brand Doctor podcast episode. I'm super excited to introduce another awesome guest to the show. Uh, I believe him and I, well, I think we have some mutual friends who connected us. <laughs> and um, I said, I, I checked him out. I said, this guy is quite the guy of accomplishments. And I just, I love what he's doing you know, for the industry and for other folks out there and I uh, had to have him on the show to talk about it. So without further ado, I want to introduce Stephen Kuhn to the show. What's going on, my friend? Wow. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it's, it's an honor to be here. Loving it. Loving it already. Great high energy. And where are you from in Pennsylvania? Oh, okay. Yeah, to ask. I, I like to, I refer sometimes to Pennsylvania. So it's between Harrisburg and Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny you say that. So I, I went to college out in Kutztown. Kutztown, Pennsylvania. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so you know it well. Oh, my Lord. Yeah. So, and then my father, he lives out in the Poconos. So, um, okay. That, that, it could be worse. Poconos is really nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a honeymoon place uh, uh, for the Pennsylvanians. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so, I'm pretty familiar with Pensy. So, when I saw you were from Pensy, I said, I got to figure out where he's at. So, uh, so for the folks that, uh, do not know who you are that listen to this show frequently or follow us on YouTube and Facebook Live. Let's get a quick little background on Stevie Kuhn and, and tell them you know, how you got to where you're at today. Wow, that's a long story. Uh, let me try to cut it short. So I graduated from high school and I went straight to the military. Uh, and after my boot camp at Fort Knox, I got sent to Germany. When I landed in Germany, I said, wow, I feel like I'm home. Uh, so I did, I did three, three consecutive tours in Germany uh, with, the, with, the, with the United States Army. And uh, one of those tours took me to Iraq. And after Iraq, I came back, um, spent a year and a half still in the military. And then I got what they call a European out. Um, and I stepped off base and I was a civilian. So I stayed in Europe, didn't even go home. Uh, that, was, that was in 1993. 1993, I got out, and what do you do after you get out of the military? Uh, you do security and bodyguard and things like that. Um, so I did that. Two years later, I opened a, a cocktail bar, and then another, and then another, and then a, a club, uh, you know, a nightclub. Not a CD one, but just a, a, a nice nightclub. Yeah. Oh, not a CD <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> in Berlin, In Berlin, Germany. In Berlin, Germany. And that got me to the place um, where the, the thing that always struck me was that it didn't matter what I did. I was always very proud to do my best. Mm -hmm. So when I was a doorman, people would come to me and say, well, you're just so different than other doormen. Um, could you maybe help me in my business? And then I would go to their business and help them. I became a bartender. And then from that bartender, I said, I just opened my own bar. So I opened my own bar. Uh, and then people said, hey, you opened these three bars in that club. Could you open a health club for me? I'm like, sure, I can open a health club for you. And then I took over a health club chain from South Africa and ended up opening seven units in Germany and Austria. And the next thing I know, I got headhunted by another company as a as a, as a director for Europe. And I, I had three and a half thousand people under me and I, had, I worked with 35 clubs, building it up to 87 clubs. Uh, this whole time I was, I still had the, the cocktail bar. So I was doing that on the side. Um, this is a very, very quick story. Um, it all crashed in 2002. Uh, um, the first time it, it crashed <laughs> and, uh, lost everything. I was married at the time. I lost, uh, uh, my wife uh, left me and, uh, I ended up losing that job as well or that contract. And I, ended up, I wrote a book for therapy, which was my golf war experience. And that was in 2003. And my golf war experience, I never talked about it to anyone before. And uh, it came out in a book. I wrote it in two weeks. Two weeks later, it was a bestseller. And I spent a year on TV and doing a book tour in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Wow. Um, yeah, it was crazy. And then during that time, that was in 2003. Before that, I, I did a stint as Mick Jagger's bodyguard. Uh, just one of those things that you do, sort of, by the way. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> it just so happens. See, I, I, you know, I could keep going on, but I think you get the point is that I treated people well wherever I did. I was never ashamed of what I did. I always knew that if I was the best at what I did, I'd always be remembered as an individual as authentic. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this, this was my first lessons in branding. Mm -hmm. So I knew that my brand was me being authentic and making everybody feel great and elevating them. Mm -hmm. So I just didn't know how to turn it into a business. Mm. You know, actually for me so it took quite a few years for me to get to understand what I was actually doing uh, through intuition uh, that was actually helping me with my brand and my business and things and it turned out that uh, more people wanted me than I could deal with so I started a company and I started doing consulting um, and I started helping them turn around their businesses start their businesses 
uh, sell their products, get their products into big box retailers, just about anything that could do. And, and people ask me, I'll, I'll never forget, there's one German company. They said, Stephen, we have a product we're coming out with and we want to sell it in America and get it in retail. Have you ever done this before? And I said, no, but it's not a problem. I'll do it. And they said, well, how do you know? I said, because I know. I've just, I'll just do it. And where there's a will, there's a way is the old saying, but you know, I, I, I like to say nothing's impossible. And we create our own reality every single day with the thoughts that we have, whether good or bad. So I just choose to do the good. And uh, I did. I landed that product. We sold 30 million in six months. And uh, they said, Jesus, how did you do that? I said, I just told you. I just did it. There's no secret and there's no, you know, no special, you know, recipe to it. The only thing is treating people well, keeping your word, because your word is everything and elevating them to make them feel fantastic. So they always want to come back. Oh. And that's, that's, that's where it's brought me today. And, and today, I, you know, I, I, eight months ago, I gave up my offline business and went online mm -hmm. for the first time. My online, and my online presence was a Twitter account, which I still have no idea how to use it, but I still got 28,000 followers, which blew me away because it was because of my book. And uh, I still don't know how to, what, what it's good for. But, uh, <laughs> and then I had, then I had, then I had a, 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 you know, a Facebook account where I had my wife, um, pictures of my wife saying, look how good she looks. I mean, that was, that was the extent of my online business, you know. Um, I forgot a part back in 2008. It crashed again uh, with my brother. We had a um, mortgage business and that, that crashed. So I lost everything again. I was homeless in Berlin for a couple months. I went into a Benedictine monastery in the mountains of Austria to recover, leaving society. Wanted to stay away, but my intuition told me you have to go back and somehow take the experience that I've been through and what I've learned and combine it and turn it into a business. And this is where conscious leadership comes from. Mm. And conscious leadership had three major parts. And this is uh, three, three major principles in it that I used for the last 15, 20 years. I just never gave it a name. And that is honesty, integrity, and transparency. And th last year, I renamed my conscious leadership uh, classes into HIT. And hence my name that some people call me the hit man, as in honesty, integrity, and transparency. And this is where I landed today. And that's why we're talking, I believe. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> what a great, what a great backstory, dude. That is like super, that is like, you made me feel like I did nothing the past uh, 18 years of my life getting oh, into. No. It's all relative. It's all relative. I mean, there was a, you know, people, when I was talking to a guy on the plane, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm, I'm on the road for Olivia Newton-John. We, we just opened her, her, her company in six countries. And, uh, and he goes, wow, that's amazing. And I said, what do you do? He said, I make rocks for zoos. And I was like, what do you mean? I was like, wow, people do that? So I was just as amazed as he was yeah. at what I did. So he, it wasn't famous. He was, it was just incredible people you meet that everyone has their own story. Everyone has this own special thing they got going for them. So it's all relative. You know, okay, I got to say one thing was really cool. Working with Olivia was cool. Mick Jagger was awesome. But the best was when I walked in and forced myself on Andrea Bocelli uh, to take me on as his one of his uh, business managers. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Wow. That's that a, you got a great track record and you got some great experience behind you. You know, so for those folks that are listening and are going to continue to listen, I encourage you to listen very closely <laughs> because we're going to get into some of the uh, hit process that, that, um, that, that Steven uh, works with his clients on. And so obviously we can't give you the whole kit and caboodle, but we're going to give you some nice stuff that you can walk away with, start applying immediately and, uh, you know, get you going in the right direction. That, that Pennsylvania just came out of you, Kabit and Boodle. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've heard that in ages. The accents, the accents that I was picking up from from Kutztown and my oh my god, my classmates, forget about it. Oh my goodness! So I'm yeah. glad I'm back in Jersey. I can promise you yeah. that. I bet, I bet, I bet, I bet. So Steve, let's talk about the hit process. So you know, it's it's honesty, integrity, transparency. Right. Yo, know, let's break each one down on a high level. And okay. how does how does each apply to branding to business? And how is it going to get people more money in their pocket, more business, better business, right? You know, all those types of things. Well, let me, you know, I could I could talk about the process as a very structured way, like a college professor or something like that. But I think it's better to, to apply it to stories and the way that it affected my life because it was a long process for me because I, it, this wasn't planned. It was just the way I live my life. Now, honesty is for me number one. Honesty in everything you do, especially with yourself. Now, when I talk about hit, it's first and foremost with yourself. If you look at honesty and you look at transparency, the byproduct of those two things with yourself is integrity. So if you're honest with yourself, 
in everything that you do and say and every thought you have and you're transparent with why you're making those thoughts and then setting up the processes in your life then all, automatically you have integrity now that integrity makes you authentic and that authenticity allows you to dictate your market value and the reason I say that is because people will say, how do you do what you do? Who are you? How can people, why do people talk good about you all the time? I, I've never heard of you before. This, this, this kind of thing. And it's because um, strength comes in many, many different forms. And one strength, the strength that I have, the biggest strength that I feel like I have is the ability to stay humble. And that comes from knowing who I am. So we, you know, I, 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 I focus on four parts of life and that's body, mind, relationship, relationships and business. And I try to keep them even. When what, say for instance, I put on 10 pounds, right? My body drops down a little bit. My, my even keel drops down a little bit. That gap has to be filled by something and that turns out to be ego. So that's why sometimes, you know, the brash guy in the bar or someone who's unhappy is very loud. Uh, you know, someone who's, who's, who's un unhappy or overweight or something lashes out. It's this kind of thing that when you're honest with yourself as to why things are happening, that you can sort them out and it keeps you amazingly humble. So humility is a strength that can't be beaten with a sword. It can't be beaten with a gun. It just is. It's the biggest strength in my opinion. So that honesty with myself and that, that transparency with myself allows me to stay authentic through this, through this integrity. And just, if, Steve, yes. real quick, you know, where do people fall short when it comes to honesty? Is it that they have to always feel like they're trying to prove something to someone or why can't people just be freaking honest? Is, is, yeah, is uh, well, question. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why, because it's, it's, everything's tied to expectations these days. How am I supposed to act? Who am I supposed to fulfill? Who, like if I have a boss that says, I need you to do this, or they ask you a question, your first thought is, what does he want to hear? Or what does she want to hear? Right? How can I say this without getting in trouble? How can I say what I, instead of just being honest with themselves? And first of all, it start, it's, it's like a snowball effect. Once you're dishonest with yourself, you, it's almost impossible to be, be, be honest with anyone around you. And that just builds up and up. And this goes down also with your, your relationships. You know, I have a group, uh, I have a group on Facebook called The Humble Man. And it's all about men seeking that primal masculinity without the macho aggression, right? So it's just about being a man, right? Just whatever that is, whatever you think it is, that's what it is. And um, we talk about our queen. As, as, you know, the queen is even with the king. We don't talk about queen looking up. We talk about even, even you know, even with the king. And <clears throat> we talk about honesty with your wife. And honesty leads to no expectations and living with no expectations is the most incredible thing that anyone can experience because when i do something for someone i do it because i want to do it i don't do it because i have an expectation i don't do it because they expect it you know i do it because i love my wife here's your flowers baby i love you so much and i'm done and there's no like she's thinking like okay does he want something from me now or but she won't say it and i say maybe and maybe i do want something but i won't say it and right there you're already on a path to some kind of argument destruction or mistrust or something and this is, it's very difficult, very difficult. You know, I have to back up very often, do what I call, you know, the panning out and look at the whole scene and say, am I really being honest with myself here? Am I doing this? Because, and when I catch it, I either drop that expectation or I tell them, hey, this is my expectation. Can you deal with that? That's what I do in business, by the way, <laughs> is I have to tell my expectations. To, and, and this is how you can avoid being, what's the word, screwed over in business. When you take, when you say very, very clearly, your expectations and you get the buy-in from the other person that they understand that these are your expectations, no more, no less. Yeah. I, I, I'm a true believer in that. And I, I believe that it's it, what happens to us is, is created by us. Yeah, of course. I, I mean, it, yeah, people feel like I, I, I know I met so many people in the past where like the world is happening to them. Everything is going wrong to them. But then they never took a quick second to look at the look themselves in the mirror and say, what kind of energy am I putting out? Is it deceitful? Is it dishonest? Is it not clear? Is it not uh, honest? You right. know, and I think that's what gets people into into pickles. So <laughs> I, I love it. So that's honesty. Now, integrity. Integrity is a byproduct of honesty and transparency. Right. And integrity, look, it ensures that you're completely clear with yourself first. Right? The reason, I mean, you, I could stand, or you, the person who has the highest amount of integrity because they're honest and transparent with themselves, could stand naked in front of everyone and they have nothing on you because you're completely clean. Because either you've, you've declared it already or you have nothing to hide. And being that vulnerable without having anything to be ashamed about is a, a powerful presence. And this is where that authenticity really kicks in and the integrity really kicks in. I can go into a room 
I have nothing to, nothing to gain because I have no expectations. I have nothing to hide. I've been honest my entire life, or at least my, my adult life, uh, you know, and I've cleared up all the mistakes that I've made in, in, at least you know, to my conscience. So I, I can walk into a room and I'm just 100% present for me. I'm not trying to impress somebody. I'm not trying to be somebody. I'm not trying to be loud. I'm not trying to impress. I'm just there. And that presence, when it's inside of you like that, is the most powerful thing. That's the kind of thing. I was in a room one time and I felt someone come in the room and I was like, Jesus. And I turned out it was Bill Clinton. Mm. And I was like, wow, okay, that guy's got presence. So I watched him for a while. And I said, what does he do? He doesn't go to people. They come to him, right? Mm. And they come to him, obviously, because he was the, the ex-president at the time. But he had, he had very few words to say. And what he did say was very elevating. Yeah. So I said, yeah, he's, he's doing it. He's doing the same thing. He's elevating people. Yeah. He makes everyone feel fantastic. There's an actor in, in Hollywood named Ralph Müller. And he's a German. And he, he played Conan after Arnie. Arnie and him are best friends. Okay. And, and they, they came to one of my club openings in Germany. And um, Ar I, I went to visit him in, uh, in L.A. one time. And um, Cafe Roma, I was waiting for him. And he comes walking down the sidewalk on Rodeo Drive. And he starts screaming, look at that guy. He looks fantastic. And I'm looking around. Who's, this, who's he talking about? He's talking about me. And Danny DeVito's sitting there looking at me going, who's this guy? I'm going, I don't know what he's talking about. You know? But he does the same thing. He elevates people. Now, he's a relatively unknown actor. He's, he knows, he, he did Gladiator and Conan, but that's about it. But he'll always be popular and he'll always have jobs because he does that, because he's authentic and he elevates others. It's just a fantastic way to be. And you know what? It costs nothing. I know. I know. I think it's just people's lack of insecurity that makes them feel and the scarcity mindset Ooh. that 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 back people into this corner where they got to feel they have to put people down or they have to you know uh hide everything and keep everything so in you know what i mean I, it, it just doesn't it doesn't make sense now i'm not saying you know from a business perspective you put everything out there you know what i mean i mean that, that that's just Nonsense. Yeah, no, 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 no. You, you, of but, course not. You don't, you don't, you don't expose yourself to undue, un, unnecessary danger or correct. fraud or whatever. I mean, of course, you know, you, you don't, I don't talk about my private life openly. Like, look, I'm completely honest about my private life. There's some things you say and some things you don't say. There's some things yeah. you share and some things you don't share. It's as simple as that. Yeah. But it's about the decisions you make that affect other people's lives. The decisions you yes. make that affect your lives and your relationships with these people. This is where hit really, really takes its toll and actually improves it, it, look, it, it makes you almost unstoppable. Yeah. Because it, anyone, anyone who tries to, look, I had people, when, when I was working in these corporations, I would go around corporations and I'd do these turnarounds and a lot, of, a lot of corporations in Europe don't want a contractor because they don't want the employees to say, oh, he's only here for a couple of months, let's ignore him or whatever, right? So they put you in as a director. So they think, you know, so that everyone thinks you're an employee. So you, you, you walk around and, and it turns out that a lot of the lower employees that are, are at the same level would be intimidated by me. Because I don't have that employee mindset, right? So they would try to destroy, they try to undercut and things like that. But you can't, when you're honest with everything you do and transparent with all everything you do, you cannot hurt someone like that. So everything that anyone ever did to me, which was very seldom, but when they did, they just ended up hurting themselves because you can't touch someone who's honest and transparent. There's nothing to hide. You yeah. can't lie about them. You can't. I, I, I love that message because I was thinking about this uh, recently about where is my happiness? Where does it need to come from? Where does my strength, my confidence, my courage, all that stuff need to come from? It can't come from a watch. It can't come from a car. You know, in my early 20s, that's where I got my, that's where I got it from. And, and of course. I've told people this, you know, I'm not afraid to tell people this. And, and it wasn't, honest to God, it wasn't until recently I figured out. My, one of my mentors said, dude, you're looking in all the wrong places for the well, confidence. It, I think we all do that, don't we? We also, I had to, you know, when I first had my, the big career boost, I, I, before, right, right before, I, I only got my MBA just to add on to the things that I had, right? So I got my MBA in the UK back in 2005. I was like, oh, let me add to this. I'm a director now, so I have to have that thing too. So I had my seven series BMW, you know, you know all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, what a waste of time that was, Gee, I'll tell you. But, uh, <laughs> okay, waste of money. Maybe not a waste of time, but a waste of money. And you're right. And you know where else you can't seek happiness? Mm -hmm. Is in other people. You can't seek happiness. If someone else is, is responsible for your happiness, you'll never be happy because they'll never be happy because they're trying to make you happy and they don't know your expectations are, you have to make me happy. So <laughs> you have to be happy oh, with yourself awesome. and love yourself first. One of the things I want to highlight real quick before we move on to transparency and then we'll wrap up because I know you got a busy schedule. Yeah. You mentioned, hey, hello. <laughs> My daughter. How are you? <laughs> she snuck out of bed, so I had to, I have to take her. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. So one of the things that you said is making other people feel great. 
Right. And I feel like if we all, from a branding perspective, if we were all able to do that, if we put that on our docket to do list, is we want to make one person feel better about themselves, feel more empowered, have more confidence, courage, whatever. You know, one a day, one a day. Yeah. That can transform the way you do business, the way people look at your business, the way you brand yourself. You know, I feel like it's not, it's no coincidence why I do the things that I do with unique designs. I always, I, I hate seeing wasted talent and I hate seeing people undervaluing themselves. And so when I come in and I help people level up their branding and their brand's identities look like million dollar brands, but before they become million dollar, million dollar brands, brands yeah. you know, eventually they, they, they do become, you know, it's like seeing that, that impact, seeing that confidence get lifted in people's uh, selves and inside their business. Like that's, that's what it, that's what it, that's what it's all about. So, it is, and, and what you, it's funny what you're talking about is basically you're providing your clients, and good leaders do this, with the six human needs, uh, some of the six human needs, like certainty, uncertainty, you know, variety, significance, love and connection, growth, contribution, yep. things like that. These, you know, Tony Robbins talks about them all the time. Yep. Um, but it's, it's those six things that everyone needs, those That's six it. human needs. And when you provide, let's say, especially the first four, like certainty, that's what you're providing. This is your brand, you're moving forward, you're done with this part, that's certainty. And variety, of course, the uncertainty is the part that keeps us curious. And of course, love, love, love and significance, love, love of self, love of others, and a significance with self and with others is key to any kind of brand, and to any kind of brand. Yeah. This, this, is, this is where the big ones really kick in. Right. The big brands really kick in because they, they look at those six needs. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, absolutely 1000%. So let's get into transparency. Yes. Well, transparency is the basically the, you know, the, the backbone of honesty. So if I'm honest to myself, I have to be honest and transparent with the people around me. So if, if, if I make a decision, let's say with a staff member or with a bunch of staff members, I think probably, you know, 90% of everyone listening has been in a company where someone just disappeared. I'm like, what happened to Joe? What happened to Sally? I don't know. I heard they got fired, you know, and the company's like hush about it. They don't talk about it, you know, and what that does is creates a culture of mistrust or distrust. Or whatever it is. Mistrust or distrust. That's the problem when you speak, you know, a few languages. Sometimes you forget one of them. <laughs> so mistrust. Um, so it, it creates mistrust. And this is where the transparency kicks in. It also kicks in with these expectations we were talking about. If I have an expectation in my private life, with my wife or my children, even I have to tell them this. It's not fair to anyone to expect anything from them without actually letting them know. And, the, and the, it's the worst thing you can do to yourself because you will always be let down. If I have no expectations, whatever happens is a surprise. And how, who doesn't love surprises? Well, we only like the surprises that we want. Yeah, of course, that's, <laughs> it's, that's that we're programmed for that, aren't we? Yeah, so. But it makes, it makes a tremendous amount of sense. And I always say like, it's a lot harder to live life with having to like fake the funk or having to have to lie or having to have to like be somebody you're not. And I talked about that in today's blog post. It's you really identify, you really need to identify, you know, your brand's mission, its purpose. And it, you've really got to find that authentic voice, like you mentioned. And when we throw that in branding, we throw authenticity around a lot. Yeah. But authenticity originality all that kind of oh i'm special and that kind of stuff but if we look at you know there's so many so many brands out there and so many people out there that um feel that they are authentic authentic and they're trying hard but they're not but they're not they're not so they're not even close to being authentic it's because they're trying to be something else yeah instead of saying whatever you are with every mistake and every every sort of little nick and little cut you have in your in your in your in your body or your you know your your presence, that's who you are. It's it. That's what you got to own. Yeah. And you know how easy it is to own who you are. You just let go of every everyone else's expectation. Just be who you are, no matter how good or bad it is. You know, and and a part of branding is also having a a uh, pushback on the other side. So it's having the nemesis. Yeah. You know? So 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 if you're a controversial, that's even better. Mm -hmm. you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, it's nothing binds together like a com common enemy. Nothing. That's right. You know, That's like right. remember, remember when America went to war again uh, in 2003, how everyone just came together and we loved America. It's a, it's a common enemy. It's yeah. It's yeah. and I and I love I love that you mentioned that because if you're trying to create this fictitious brand or business that's that's living on false pretenses, you're going to attract 
all those people that you can't stand. <laughs> and, and, and like Great that point. happened to me early on. I mean, I was, I was attracting a lot of pretentious people, a lot of folks that like were mean to their staff people, like, you know, didn't treat their employees and staff and team members like people. They treated them like animals. Right. And I was like, this is so, fu- what am I putting out there that's attracting this? Well, those people that treated them like animals were unhappy with themselves because they were living, trying to live a life uh, according to expectations that they had. They weren't, they weren't communicating, or they had expectations in the family that they couldn't, they couldn't live up to because they weren't being communicate, being transparent, and being honest with themselves. Yeah. You know, it's it's all tied together. And, you know, it took me years to figure it out. I kept saying, okay, I always felt something like behind me on my shoulder. I'm thinking there's something big there, and I'm just not seeing it. And one day it hit me, hit me. <laughs> I just said, no pun intended. But one day it hit me. I said, yeah. I've, what I've been doing is right. I just haven't been going all the way through with it. Uh, I thought if I'm honest with myself, that it automatically, it automatically, it does automatically, uh, you know, attach to others. But if you don't teach it, you don't learn it. You know how it is. So I, I started teaching it about 10, 10, 15 years ago. I used to call it conscious leadership then self-leadership, conscious self-leadership. But those three principles were always involved. So I just ended up calling it it. And, 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 and they're the true fundamentals. I think they're the true fundamentals and the basics. If you get those right, honesty, integrity, transparency, you're going to have a business that is just going to outlast and outgrow everyone else. And you're going to have happy clients. You're going to, you're going to be more happy and fulfilled with what it is that you're doing and providing. So it's a, it's a win-win. So, uh, Steve, I know you got to run. You just got eight minutes before you get on your next call. But, uh, (laughs) for those folks that want to learn more about you, uh, how, where can we send them? Um, you can send it to my website. It's Stephen with a V dash Kuhn, K U H N.com, Stephen dash Kuhn.com. And you'll see what I would suggest if anyone wants to know more about hit, go to my page and you'll see sign up for the hit video series. And you get five free videos about hit and you can check that out. And otherwise if you scroll to the bottom, you can, you can hit me up for a free consultation. What I do is I'm a turnaround consultant. So I help, I help companies that have their back against the wall. I help them break out of that, create immediate impact with their revenue so that they can relax a little bit, look up, and we can actually concentrate on the growth and, and the scaling. That's awesome. Steve, it was a pleasure, my friend. Thank you Indeed. so much. Awesome. It was, it, fl- it was flowing, my friend. It was flowing. What a, what, a great interview. <laughs> what a great interview. What a great interview. My goodness. Thank you, my friend. No, listen, it was a pleasure having you on board. And I uh, can't wait for this to publish and get you over the, we do a little 60 second best of moments clip. So we'll oh, get that great. over to you uh, for all the podcast guests we do that for. And it's just, just, it's just great to be able to highlight some of the key pieces that you've, because you've just dropped a a tremendous amount of bomb here. And I I want people to really take what we talked about today and implement it and execute it and watch the difference that it makes. So there you have it guys, just some really quick housekeeping things. If you haven't subscribed to the brand doctor podcast yet on iTunes, please do so. If you love the content, I invite you to write a quick little written review because that's sort of like my fuel, my flames, that keep this boat rocking. And um, if you haven't commented or, or shared this video on YouTube, this will be produced, nicely produced on YouTube as well. Uh, head over to my YouTube channel and subscribe there. We have tremendous amount of videos like this, um, as well as some other tips, tricks, techniques to help you really build your brand and take it to the next level. That's all I got for you today, guys. Hope you enjoyed this episode and I will catch you on the next one. Have an amazing day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.